Blaine and Wagaman have testified that they were following procedures and that they didn't abuse any child. KSFY's Judica Drote is on the scene in Plankton as jury deliberations continue. Judica. Brian, at this hour, the jury, nine women and three men, are on the third floor of this courthouse talking about the fate of Tamara Wagaman and Raylene Lane. And as they do so, family and friends are pacing the hallways, pacing the stairways. The tension here is very thick as everyone wonders what they're going to say. Now, already twice this morning, the jury has asked the judge for help. The latest question came within the half hour. They wanted the court reporter to come into the jury room with them and read back testimony. That request was denied by the judge. He told the jury they're going to have to rely on their memory and on the evidence in the jury room to reach their conclusion. In the meantime, all the family and all the friends are waiting for any word from that jury room. The morning began early for the jury. After an 8 a.m. breakfast, it was back to the courthouse shortly before noon. They are considering... Tamara Wagman, she faces three counts of child abuse, and Raylene Lane, who faces four counts of child abuse. The seven-day trial ended yesterday afternoon after emotional testimony from the accused. The prosecution says they showed the court a pattern of child abuse. The defense says this trial is only political, and the only lives ruined are the ones who stand accused. Now, each woman faces a maximum of 10 years in prison on each count if they are found guilty. Reporting live in Plankington with photojournalists Jeff Cleland and Derek Yeager, I'm Judica Drote, Dakota First News. Very good, Judica. Thank you. Now, when the verdict does come down, we'll bring it to you right here on KSFY. Of course, stay with Dakota First News for continuing coverage. In other news this morning, Sioux Falls police have arrested a 16-year-old Roosevelt High School student and charged her with a weapons violation. Police tell KSFY school officials suspected the girl had stolen equipment from a chemistry lab. When they searched her locker, they discovered a Swiss Army knife, which does violate the school district's zero tolerance.